Hello everyone and welcome back to the COD Archive. In this video, we're going to delve into the top 10 best performances from weeks 1 and 2 of the CDL Major 1 qualifiers. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight into the action. Starting off our list at number 10 is Illy's Game 1 hardpoint performance against LA Thieves, where he dropped 27 kills and 16 deaths. He's going to get two. Great work out of him. Yeah, nice uh, cruise again. There was a lot of effort and emphasis put in to get that streak, and that is a big usage. For He's the man in first. It's the rookie. Rookie's got to make the play. He's got the dumpster hop up under cover, but he gets stunned, and he doesn't get gunned. He wins the gunfight, stuck in the process, but it's not enough, and LA Thieves gets to time first. Thieves are in once again. Kami now trying to take care of Hook. Finds himself a kill. Thieves are in again. 50 seconds to go on the point, and it's going to be a battle on the back line. Woo! Breaks through into the time. Five seconds for the win. I don't think the thieves can do it. Oh, Surge. Man. My God, did it take a pound of flesh? But what a map one that was. Bro, and welcome back, Illy. Good Lord, it is nice to see this kid play completely took over at the end the two-piece gets one guy at a time think it might have been a wall bang wins the gunfight in the back alley and seals the deal the cruise missile that Illy was able to earn getting the two-piece on p1 to open up the map on top of 27 kills leading the lobby Illy, how do you do that was such a nice return to form wow 27 to 16 here's a look at the highlights there from map one Damn, man, what? This is the first day of the season. We're already up to a good so good. This is so good. I mean, the change Seattle surge. Yeah, and that is some clean work by, like, the world champs on the side of Seattle as well, right? Illy and RCD is in a very sort of, like, precarious situation. They read the pressure perfectly and deliver. Well, maybe not all the time. They end up getting broken towards the end, but at the very least, they get a full setup towards new. Is Illy currently on a force break? We go from the big old dime to that little cafe. Now over towards Waterfall. A little found thing. I don't know. We're going to get these names right towards the end of the season. Don't you worry, friends. Over to Illy looking to make that five spree happen. Streaks are on the menu. Nice moves. Gets it. Great work. Finds the kill, hard points up, open for business now. Got to deal with Afro, but Surge have the numbers hit chance. Yeah, you can see how hard he's playing for the streaks too. So you got the numbers, you got the time, and you really want Illy to get this next kill. Trying to lock in a cruise missile, and he's gonna deliver. The bait is on point, but- Moving on to number nine, we have Kenny's exceptional game four hard point performance against New York. You see Eddie all the way across the map. Now maybe mid hall is a little bit vulnerable here, uh, but New York doesn't know that, right? Because we're in John Yester, they're not. Uh, <laughs> so you have two players set up in the back with Fred and Kenny, and while they are taking them down, that is going to be three dead. Siv, the last player alive, and with Shachi's position, you just have to work all the way across the map. It's Kenny on seven in a row. There is that cruise. AR Kenny can subliners turn into time-wise, and it looks like this is going to be what? 40 or so seconds they're going to get? You're talking like an 80-second swing. Yeah, just taking a look at the scoreboard. We have a bit of a pause. It's a, it's the option to get set up. Yeah, Kenny, 22 kills. Again, leading the way. I'm mean, easily in the way by a margin right now in the lobby. Yeah, he's had a, a great series for Op. Oh, well, you're going to see another lead change here. New York going to have to have a break. It, it's one of those things, like, depending on how this result is, like that plate push, I almost wonder if you just give that up. Yeah, yeah. Realistically, right? You did so much work at P2. You just say, hey, I think you can spawn out there. We're just going to go set up at Burger. But maybe they can clutch on up through a break. Yeah, maybe it's just cruise? like you've been, you've been breaking. Oh, you've been breaking. Oh, man. It, maybe you're just thinking you've got another break in you. Yeah, Cruz is gone. Finds nothing. Kenny and Fred find the kills. 20 more seconds for Optic. Nice and we're shots. heading to a map five. Nice shots. Clean there from Shasti. Kidsman getting caught on the cross. Kenny approaching 30 kills. We saw nobody over 20 in our first terminal arc when we casted to start the day, but this time we've got people popping off. Five more seconds to go. Five in a row for Kenny before he falls as well. Dashing inside, locking it down. Nobody close and optic get us to a map five. I think you might be right. Like, you know, as good as the break look, and I was thinking at the time, like, this 20 points get you over 200, you're up like 50, but then it's funny because right as I said that, I looked at the map, I'm like, oh yeah, but they've got like upside control and this map is this map and you just can lock it down for yeah, so yeah, long. Yeah, I mean, props to Optic, they just said screw it. Yeah, it's fine. They broke it. Let's get set up early at Burger. You yep. had three players in that area. There was a, a chance, I think, for New York where they had a bit of a pinch, but uh, the players held on. Uh, but Kenny with the 30 bomb, almost 5,000 damage. Outside of that, I mean, the scoreboard looks pretty similar but between the rest of the other seven players. During the eighth spot on our list is Miami Heretics captain, Lucky, who dropped 12 kills in game two search and destroy against the Carolina Royal Ravens. And the dream. 
for Chase. He's upstairs. The damage dealt. 20 seconds to go, Gwyn. Oh, my. Simon. Oh, the timing. No. Lucky by name. Actually, a brilliant play altogether, but a little lucky with the timing. Yeah, lucky by name, lucky by nature. Card timing at its finest, but that is a, a dicey round. Again, Gatorex and Gwyn, the chemistry is on point, barely able to get that bomb down. So the Heretic's timing slightly off at the start and then perfect towards the end. So oh, God. that'll be two rounds in a row for the Heretics. And by the way, as crazy as the end round was, keep in oh. mind the way that round started is every single player on the Carolina. Oh, he's got to go to the other side of the map to recover that one. Yeah, that's going to be a uh, typical sort of round we see as well. Just like double hits with the rivals jumping up through the window, taking the gunfight on the stairs. If you come out on top, you're feeling great. He's able to find one pick, but obviously bombed down. And you see the setup that the Ravens have. They are going to have every single cross covered. Number four, Gwen is going to spot him when he jumps down low. So they should know exactly where Lucky's going to be playing. The rattle of noisy dripping pipes and birds chirping in the background that's all we've got for now for lucky 30 seconds as he is very diligently cleaning these apartments number two are we waiting for the third the pinch is there wait a minute there's three Top he's got the bomb, too. Got bomb recovered what an unbelievable turn this is that is going to be a 1v1 there's no shot right there he gets the bomb down too Okay. Oh, Dios mio. Gwyn. I tell you what, that is the kind of pressure you do not want in your opening matchup. Gwyn saves the day oh, for the man. Ravens. I nearly laid an egg. And that's a bad sign for Carolina, too. I thought Gwyn had the cross from, like, the God Steps early on. By the way, if he doesn't have a rival nine... Don't know if he wins that. So good no news just having an SMG, but I thought Gwyn had like the playground cross. It's one information passed. It's silence been used by Gwyn. Possibly a bit of a waste, but now in we go. The Ravens saw. Spots vehicle. Corners checked. It's time to get some kills on the board, boys. You're running out of time. Lucky with a fantastic angle on the Gwyn there. Eliminated. 4v3. Yeah, Lucky just invisible in that moment for the free beat first blood and not quick enough for the trades. Clay, the shots are there, but the slot too fast. You know, a player's back apartments as well. So you might be forced to work through the A site with a man disadvantage and a lot of ARs. And Metals is going to play this corner all day long. Got her X knows he's there. Lovely tags in onto Vickle. Managed to make it a 3v3. Through the window. Oh, Real. Brilliant with shots. 3v2, less than 30 on the clock. Nice tags again from Lucky. 2v2, 25 to go. Go for the wall bang again. Just got it, right? Well, the nade doesn't connect, so yeah, it doesn't have the information. Goderex gets the bomb down, out with his life. He's going to be fighting Journey as well. Journey wins it. Clay, you need to clutch this round for your team. Oh, Journey, he doesn't stop believing for a second. Lucky there from the stairs wow. to pick up kill, and the instant defuse. What a retake for the Miami Heretics. I mean, again, literally just like swarming on it. Lucky's able to calm, like, hey, if he gets the bomb down, more than likely cross to the right. Journey just full over commitment by Miami, but... They've made those overcommitments in prior rounds. They're not making any mistakes now. And Journey has the perfect angle for the first blood. Catches Real running up the steps. A lot of damage in the Goddard X as well. So he's not able to get away with it. And that's still information passed over. Vicol finds Clayster again. 4v2. The Ravens being plucked from the map. Two to go. And just so little time again on these offensive rounds. And yeah, there it is. One versus four for God RX. This is going to be 2-0 for Miami. They know exactly where it is. They got him tagged out. They get the kill in Vamos again with the 2-0 lead. There you go. The Miami Heretics battering their way through the series so far. We've only been going for 30-something minutes, and they're already 2-0 up. The Carolina Ravens have been stunned so far. Chance, looking at the scoreboard as well. If not for Gwyn, the shining light. Alongside Goderex in the damage department, the shining light there for the Ravens. Lucky and Vehicle though. Wow, what a run from them. Lucky's round with that diffuse chance. I mean, lucky by name, lucky by nature. It all worked out for him. At number seven, we have Hydra's insane search and destroy performance against the Vegas Legion. Busy boys, guys at least saw somebody's tail.
This is so aggressive, too. I mean, they have just flooded through that back alley. So two players in the subliners right back over towards B. And the other two players turtled up top in corners. Hydra, obviously, being one of those players, might have a, a little dance with Sandy here in a moment. And has the pre-fire as well. Gets it done and gets out with his life. Possibly the best player in the world. Very, very quiet. He's hunting Vegas. Smile on his face with good reason. The third kill, a lot of help from his teammates, but that initial 1v2. Yeah, let's take a look at this one again. Lovely stuff out of the Phenom. I mean, is that just like instinct on the timing or maybe good comms from Kismet as well, being a bit of a traction in the window, but if it- No, I just got to check this. Uh-oh. I'm not sure if he saw them. That might be the call. Here comes the subliners reinforcements. Hydra's got full pockets. He could work with the frag grenade to take the players off the point. It's Kismet. Number one. The second, not enough. Hydra now maybe sent in to clean them up. Less than 20 seconds on the clock by the time he gets the play going. Purge. Unfortunate timing. All down to attach now the 1v2. Can he pull something special out? Rival in hand. It's the attach of old, but I don't think he's got the time. The subliners might have done it. Final few moments. He does have seconds to plant the wow. bomb. Good work, New York. Yeah, that's, that is an absurdly good setup as well because you saw Hydra drew in the, the cheeky little jump spot out the window, but it was actually Skies from backup. She'll take it first blood. I mean, he is flying for those chows too and attached jumps as well. Everybody moving right now on the map, but Hydra at least tries to even up the odds. This would be a 2v4 clutch for the sub duo of New York. If anyone can do it, they can. Hydra makes it a 2v2. Guns up for the chow, no one there. We pump the brakes once again, 40 seconds to go. And they know Purge was behind him, but they're just really taking the time. They don't have bomb, and Kismet's gonna deliver it 1v1. Purge versus Hydra again. All right, Purge. Oh, you had a chance, and that was it. Snuffed once again. The world champions reign supreme with a 1v1. Sure, the nade, not those skies. Advantage goes to the New York subliners. Ah, literally nowhere. And this is so tough as well. Yeah, I mean, Purge is just going to die. Right. Like Hydra, he Hydra. could assassinate him if he wants Here to. Purge comes. is never going to turn Here around. He comes. Thank you very much. It's a freebie. Attach. Once upon a time, the king of clutch. In a 1v3 against our world champs. They are potentially lining up for him. Will the stars align? There's one. A quick reposition. The bomb planet A. Now things look a little different for Attach. And it's one sub, one AR. We already know Kismet just loves to play in corners, wait for the information to come through. We're just trying to find a way to isolate these gunfights. If he wins a, a long one against Skies, has an opportunity. The time is not on his side and Skies is not gonna give him anything. Yeah, there's no way. Subline is gonna sit pretty. Trophies just in case. This is to keep Vegas alive in the map. And it's not looking good. Kismet closes the door. The New York subliners. They dominate Skid Row, and it's a 2-0 so far. And I, again, not to harp on it too much, but it just comes down in my mind to that four versus two round where Kismet Hydra clutch up. Like, it, you're doing so well in search and destroy, but these sort of icy moments are just sort of getting under their skin. Because that was like best case scenario. Sib was having a slow game, started 0-6. Like, you're really slowing down. Like, even just the trophy production is able to get out, which opens up like those back alley hits. Coming in at number six is Sib dropping 31 kills in 145 seconds of hill time against Seattle Surge. You're going to have Illy get over to that hill first. So a one point advantage for Seattle Surge, but Sim right up the street, takes down two. Uh, yeah, no, so for whatever reason, when he gets to this area right here, uh, he likes to make plays. Like, that's, that's where his SMP can like, escape from. He's had some wild ones in control. I don't know what it is about that part of the map, but he feels uh, very, very comfortable. And uh, if he would have won that second fight, uh, more evidence of that. But uh, so far, so good for FaZe. You're about to get back into the point. Still 35 seconds to go. Nobody in for now, though, because the two people with eyes on the cross, and it's not going to happen. So far, so not good for FaZe. It's simply suddenly the only one alive, but sometimes that is all you need. Well, in the worst case scenario for them is the spawns flip, right? Because with P3 coming up, that's what they were doing. They were trying to hold the tank, keeping them spawn palace. And but oh Surge no. didn't react, so now we're going to flip again, and Wait. there it is. Oh, and... Yeah, Simp, Simp and the whole Surge team spawn on top of each other. Exactly. And Simp's just killing them all. Um, 
that's the way that works. Yeah. But, I mean, they were ready. Who's got 14, trying to keep up with the pace with Sim. Hook now is there. Maybe if you get this scrap time, I think it's a bit of a bit of a win, but that's going to be three dead. Comes down to this 1v1, and Sim's winning it. He's winning all of it. There's the cruise missile. 19 and 7. This man, we've been... We're going to have basically a tie game. If they get the tick, it'll be 2.30, 2.30. Going into our next hard point. Abizi with a kill close to next. Now we set up. Here we go. 22 points needed for Surge. 15 needed for FaZe. Surge desperately have to break on in. Sim still finding kills around the point. He's up to 31. Making another double for him through on the feed. Five to go now for the win. Sim ripped out of it by Arsenis. Shots from Arsenis into the spawn as well, but someone's got to get into the point. They got to contest. Not getting to happen or not going to happen long enough. The respawns go the way of FaZe. Sim has another insane, insane map there in the map four. And it's laughs up, smiles up, phase up. Yeah, just all the kills on the transition from Palace. Obviously, you're fighting the scrap time. You're going to get gifted the rotation because they fight for the scrap time. But even after, there was about 10 seconds. You had three players try to get there if they were Surge, and they were just cut down. You just never really had uh, any trades come in from Surge. Bro, I think you saw like, Illy just like hands in his face, head back. Like, it's just they're losing some bra Breaking into the top five, we've got Journey's insane 40 bomb performance against the Minnesota Rocker. Just 33 points now for Heretics. They're done. Four in a row for Journey. Five in a row for Journey. Six in a row for Journey. Yeah, he's popping Quattro, up. Cinco, six. That's that. Maybe see it coming in on the cruise. See what he can find. There it is. So up to seven in a row. And we talked about Linz and his hot start. Yeah, he slowed down, but Jeremy has not. 34. Make it 35. 15. He got this map and series. So you're through the middle of the map. That is going to be too dead, but it's quickly traded. Metals with the rival. Yeah, that player you took down, he's going to meet you right off spawn. And you sort of got that hike again, like you talked about for Rocker. You're spawning Northside trying to get there, and that's going to be the tough part. One break should be all it takes. I thought they were in, but the Trophy hits one in the face, keeps them out for a second. Now they fight back in. Trophy, hopefully not the MVP for Rocker, but it did enough to maybe delay the push and allow Rocker to get back into this. Five to go now for Heretics. Bickle trying to win fights, able to take down one. The response there immediately on the other side, but Journey, who's been the MVP of the map, hits again. Three in a row for Journey. Ball game series to Heretics. 40 bomb for Journey on sub base. Closes out the series. Look at each other. They just won an attorney. I don't know. Like, they're, they're, they're pumped about that one. But that one had that was a grueler. There were some real tight maps, and yeah, you're always gonna feel the best about one of those. Oh, no doubt, no doubt about it, but yeah, you kind of just saw, like, especially Vickle, right? One of those players who, we got some things to work on. Yeah, but as you said, he's meticulous, and yeah, he really wants... Claiming the fourth spot on our list is Pred's record-breaking control performance against the Carolina Royal Ravens. Gets up close and personal, finds Clayster as well, but no, stays alive. They're still alive. This Gwyn is doing everything here he can. We'll jump out the oh. eventually taken down by Pred. The reign of terror ends on the guns of Optic. And they did so much work to get in that position, and now they have to fight for it again. Yeah, they have to run right through the pits of fire. I think that's something that you would say, Bryce. I tried to be like you, but here we go. With only 25 seconds left, you do have Gwyn, Mr. Do It All so far in this control and a position. But once he gets shut down, only 20 seconds left. Carolina has to try to stop this time. They have to sprint onto this point. Fred continuing to hold the door. He has a cheeky close the door, reload. <laughs> Fry clicks her out of his trousers. And oh my goodness, only Gwyn can be there, but he falls as well. And for Ravens, it has been mixy, it has been majestic, but I'm um, not you, Dashy. Unfortunately, that's your teammate. But Optic Texas, they are in control to eventually stop this clock. You can see here. Shossi just trying to hold them off here as they get into it. That's a huge kill by Pred as they walk into this point. And now the Ravens have a difficult job to do. They have to find some trades somewhere and crack this open as the first tick is now gone, but they find nothing. There's only the Ravens in spawn. There is nobody flying through to save them here at this point as that second tick is done. The third tick is almost upon us, and the Ravens find nothing into this one as they go down 2-0 to zero in the control study. Uh, pressure. And now they're so focusing on, we got to take down Gwyn because he's going to try to be the playmaker again. Can his teammates from the rest, side of, rest of the side of Carolina find a couple kills around the map? No, they do not. Red finds two. The cruise missile gets invested. You have the info. And Kenny still has not died, Bryce. <laughs> that is what is known as a spawn trap. That is what is known as a beating. Unbelievably one-sided here, but Gwyn 
has found his way into B. Just a tiny hope for him, but he has to get on the point. Fred is hunting him as well. He knows where he is. Puts the bullets in, and he now goes for the chow and cuts him down in his prime. Optic have not let this one go at all. And Ravens, to the other side of the map. They now have to run the gauntlet in 15 seconds. And I don't know if they can do it. Finally, they take that on Kenny, but there's not that much time left. You have to go. You have to get on this point. Optic Texas holding on, on the cut, but those two kills might be it, Bryce. They might have found something. Gwyn gets himself in again. The timer stopped at 3.9 seconds, but he is alone. The Ravens are running to meet him. Surely from this point, they can't win. Pred calling in and everything as well, but the bodies will fall. The Pred missile does nothing, and it will be off deck Texas with another clean 3-0. The Ravens are not happy, and there's a reason for that. Yeah, I wouldn't be happy after this match either, Bryce. Just came in and got beat up in about 30 minutes in a 30 minute series, not a single match. Taking the third spot is Fame's incredible search and destroy performance against the LA Thieves, where he went on an insane 10 kill streak. Can happen. Just clearing out every possible angle. Where is the bomb carrier? That's what the Thieves are looking for. I think a lot of this might be uh, counting utility as well on top of looking for the bomb carrier. A bunch of stuns and nades have come out. Maybe just LAG waiting for their moment to chuck the smoke and go for the B bomb plant. There's like some interesting timing potential too on the A side of the map and there it comes and Fame somehow wins it. And again, the first blood is good enough, but he gets the second kill as well. So Fame impressive stuff. And of course on a five spree, one more locks up a cruise on a map like this could absolutely do some damage. Oh my God, indeedy. Possibly playing in the corner. No, oh, looking for the mantle. Cash these players out by chicken coops. Joe Deceives has got to have his wits about him. Has to have the gun at the ready. If Fame hops that wall, it could be curtains for him. Pump the brakes in a big way. Joe Deceives, he's doing a lot of this completely alone. Opening salvo. Oh, Fame. He's seen a red dot and he's going to chase it. Hungry for the streak. Checks it. Go! <laughs> 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 You cannot ask for more than that. The third kill for fame as well. Give me the AC screams in the player cam. It doesn't matter though. It's now map point LAG. I mean, come on. Like that is just absurd Call of Duty timing. It's a great setup as well. You had Adam Assault actually like on the bridge looking over top. And as soon as he gets the intel when he's above him, well, fame and goes and looks towards the middle of the map. And it literally does not get easier than that. Two kills on players that line up and shift kind of team in the search and destroy. Well, maybe they have that momentum for the round 11. This is it. Final shot. No crews, no nothing. It's a fresh round, but it's LA Thieves on attack. I mean, gorillas, Jesus, LA. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, lock in, Thieves are on defense. Yeah, you have Afro, I think, laying down, staring at top third right now, waiting for a player to jump up. You have Fame, meanwhile, just waiting for someone to flank, but I don't know if number six is gonna commit. Fame's actually starting to make moves. So it's another situation where I think the, the play is on Fame and as soon as like action happens near him is when gorillas might jump on this B site. And there's the first blood, that's the go button. And Fame is absolutely, it's just unstoppable right now. It's a 10 spree. And the first blood that they will be very, very happy to take. B-bomb site wide open, a lot of pressure there right now. Afro's gone as well. Trains are there, Cammy can't get with his life. Down a ghosty. And he's on the wrong side of the map. That bomb will be planted. He has nothing left to throw. If he can get there in time and possibly stop the plant, that's one thing. It's the check. A big win up close. Has to run for his life. Has to stay alive in the 2v1. He's got some time to work with. His players in power positions as well, though. That is going to be immensely difficult to win these gunfights. More importantly, you got to fly, go, so You don't have time. You got to make a move now. The clock is ticking. Oh, finds another one. Creepy. One. Does he see the minimap? It's on assault. He's playing it very patiently now, right behind him. Oh my God, will Assault find this? There's the tags. Adam Assault, an MVP world champion, ice in his veins as the LA Gorillas take the lead two to nothing here in this series. The lights might be too bright for LA Thieves. Fame getting in their way. I mean, that's the best like spree we've seen in Search and Destroy so far this year. Absolutely electric stuff. And maybe the cruise missile play doesn't work out for him, but it was just a setup for more glory in the final round. Again, the first blood he was able to collect four in that round. Uh, that is as good as it gets for an SMG player there in certain the number two spot goes to Dashy's game one hardpoint performance against the Ravens, where he dropped an insane 2.3 KD as well as over two minutes of hill time.
Yo, Optic is gonna be fully set up. You do have Real though, pushing through tunnel, causing some problems. He does take down one, but he drops and now it all falls into the hands of Dashi. How many more can he get? It leads to Kenny finding the third and Optic Texas again win a rotation. But got a Rex. He's trying to make something happen. Real needs to make this kill, not gonna be able to do it. And will be got a Rex now pushed into the corner. A green ball surrounding him as he almost finds Kenny as Quinn managed to find two himself. A little bit of light here for the Ravens. They've been pushed back every single step of the way, but it doesn't matter if they get into the point, and that is what they have done. Gonorex still has to stay alive. Dashi is going to be up top P2, looking over, eventually trying to make this move as more players flood in, and eventually he will fall. It's great from the Ravens, but just not good enough on the rotation again. Yeah, it just all came down to Dashi, man. The fact that he stays alive, top P2, gets two kills, and then finds the final two of the players pushing up towards Ticket, and and is now soaking up that hill time. Carolina, no, this is not going to be an easy break, and we do not want to be too aggressive here and give them that free rotation over towards P1 because Optic Texas, they're all starting to turn up. Dashy on the five spree, one kill off of earning that cruise. Right. The Ravens, their first push has fallen. The hill has not popped yet, but they now have to go across the map and break this quickly, or this could be the death knell. They have to just find a way through. It all starts by taking down Fred out of garage. Now you can push through ticket side. You can push through the, through the garage, forcing all of Optic Texas to spawn over towards Tunnel. But if you're not getting any kills, they're not going to spawn anywhere. That's another four dead in the feed. Optic Texas trying to have two full 60 holds at this P2. I told you, Bryce, this is a pretty good damn hill to hold full 60s. You just cannot get through. There are too many trades. There are too many angles to look at. Tunnel is closed off. Kenny's going to hold the first one down as well. Dashi will be on the overwatch. And he will get a trade for him. Doesn't even need to get that second kill here. Kenny, he's on a five streak. Dashi's on five as well. And the race started off with a good two piece. Now it's time to fly. And unfortunately, the trophy system takes down Pred. But Dashi there for the trade. Optic Texas, they get the break. And they can win the game here. They are. They do have a little bit of numbers here, Ravens. They're going to go for this one one more time as they will lose if they don't. But they're just finding bodies drop all the time when they're going for these pushes. Man. They cannot get the trades going their direction. And with nine seconds left to go, the Ravens are making a move, but there is nothing for them but defeat. And that will go to Optic Texas. It is no way for the Ravens to start off day number two after the defeat they had yesterday. Yeah, that's just tough, man. That's just tough. You gotta go. You got you go to sleep getting three on by Toronto. Then you gotta wake up and play this gauntlet of a roster in Optic Texas in the respawn specifically. That now puts them at six and one in the hard points. They made that one look pretty easy. It just came down to the fundamentals, right? You're breaking P1 or at least contesting P1. All good. You can take that 40. We're gonna get a full 60 every single time at P2. They made sure they had the rotation towards that side of the map. And before we dive into the top performance of the CDL this season, we'll be showcasing Snoopy's exceptional performance against Toronto Ultra as our honorable mention for this episode. Snoopy dropped 32 kills and 22 deaths while topping the damage chart of the lobby during game one hardpoint. It comes in from Kleenex to take out Snoopy, so it's just keeping this hill white now, but we have to flip these spawns if you are Ultra. You just have to get past Priesta who's beaming, Snoopy who's currently beaming, Boston are not giving up, they're fighting for this final 20. 220 and rising. Boston Breach cannot win it here. Toronto Ultra certainly cannot. We'll be heading over towards another hill. Snoopy doing his best here. Sitting at 27 and 19. The Young God slaying it out for the Boston Breach. Over towards the bookstore we go. Toronto Ultra need to start finding some kills and finding them very, very fast. Then boy needs to get himself online. The rest of the boys, they're there. They're frying. We don't like to try and lean into kills too much, but he's very much lagging behind. But can the rest of the guys on the Toronto Ultra side find a break over towards the bookstore now? 20 seconds to go. Boston still in control here, Jet. Boston still spawning in towards the back. They're trading efficient in towards the library. Inside trying to be the player on the flank to make something happen. He finds two. He's 24 and 12. This guy is going Going off. Someone needs to help him, and that two piece right there might have just been enough for Toronto Ultra to stay alive a little longer. Might just keep them away. 11 seconds now for Boston Breach. Slasher will find one. Over towards the generator. Slasher will find a second. You need to lock it down if you're inside. He's holding the back. Kleenex, you hold the front. Is that the bait from Slasher? That may well find a way through. The back is being lost, and as has the hill. 15 seconds to go now. Boston Breach continue to lock this one in. Drone Ultra spawning nowhere near. And Boston Breach come out swinging. Map number one goes over towards the Boston side. That is exactly what I needed to see right there, Ton. You were asking me before this match started, what do we need to see out of Boston? How do they make this a series? It all came down to map one, but 
they dominate in that map when, when it came to the rotations. The only real shining light for Toronto Ultra was the beginning of that game where Kleenex drops a three-piece, flips the spawns instantly, and they were able to chain it to P2. But everything else on the map was all Boston Breach. Great at the Plain Hill towards P3, but even better at the, at the Burger Hill towards P4. They were the first team there on the first rotation. Even though it got a little scrappy, they walk away with a majority of the time, and they take the spawns. They do it again for the second time, and that eventually leads to the victory for Boston Breach. You got the young rookies who came out to play Snoop be just went crazy in map number one. Obviously, on the opposite side for Toronto Ultra, Envoy didn't have the best. If he spawns in a little bit, probably a closer game. But Boston Breach shut all the haters up. They said, we're here to stay. And that's a great map number one win. Versus hell of a lot of fight in them. Inside, though, had a godly game for Ultra. And ultimately, it didn't matter. And usually when you see a performance coming out from a player like Jamie Craven, just like that, you think Ultra are going to have this one in, in the bag. But Boston Breach so scrappy and just getting in amongst it when they needed to the rotations were really really nice capsule making some good work over towards the back playing an early rotation over towards p1 i, I mean look and now the moment we've all been waiting for the top performance of mw3 season so far belongs to simp simp single-handedly dismantled the la thieves with an insane 42 kill performance the kill record and control so far this season so clock will continue to tick thieves doing a nice job so far Small life advantage and not giving up too much map control as the defense tries to get off spawn and get more forward. Yeah, your biggest thing right here, if you are Atlanta phase though, is just taking down this player at B. They just do that and let's just complete these three segments because we've been able to outslay all of LA. They're trying to set up pitches, trying to work through PB the alley. Sip reads the first, but his teammates all the way across the map. Selling is able to continually stop that clock by hopping on that eight point and now everyone is forced to hit that rotation second tick not fully locked but no one defensively can get over to deplete it so simp will step in make sure that second tick comes through now it's both points at the same time sell on one side simp on the other single tick earned over towards a finally the retake comes through as thieves have made the cognitive decision to chalk over b and get this a defense going but two ticks away from being 0 by phase have to have it here you gotta have it you gotta have it, but Simp is finessing with that Dead Silence invested. Just trying to find him an opening, trying to find a way in towards the point, and LA, they're just gonna give it right to him. Can his teammates Man. find a couple kills around the map? Yes, they do. They eliminate that player in the back of their base. Now they have the crosses. Watch, this is where you invest the cruise missiles, make it rain, and lick it, put the game to point. Phase's focus through mid map is just absolutely brilliant and simple. Oh, that second man. kill. Are you kidding? Very different for Cami if he got a little bit of support but didn't come through. Now time a huge issue. Nine plays ten. Twenty seconds on the clock. It's going to be a full wrap around the back and oh, you can just take a look at the mini map. Phase are fully prepared for this. Inside of buildings, watching crosses, cell finding a ton of information, and no one can confirm a kill. Afro does get one around the back but he would have to do a lot more than that. And no, FaZe will not allow Thieves to break through the street and sit for the final triple and a 3-0 for Atlanta FaZe over the LA Thieves. It wasn't the cleanest. You still have a couple of things that you need to work on, but you get the job done this time in three instead of game five. But they needed to make adjustments, was on their defensive zone, invasion control. They won all three. And the search and destroys, they won the first blood battle. They were hitting a couple rotations and winning that SD as well. We expect that from them. But even in that map number one, we saw it in their first matchup. They did not have any success on P3. They find a break in the first map. So there you have it. These are the top 10 best performances from weeks one and two of the CDL Major One qualifiers. Which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. This is the COD Archive, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Thank mm -hmm. you.